For today's sponsor we have GVG Mall, where you can acquire your Windows 10 Home serial key for only $16 and using my SKEG discount code will get you 20% off, making it only $11. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and after getting it, you simply need to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello guys, it's Shit Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. So today's video is a video about Windows 10 versus Windows 11 in terms of gaming. As for the Windows 10, I'm using the 21 H1, so 21, 2021 half one version. And as for the Windows 11, I am using the Windows 11 Insider Preview version, which is the version that you can update your Windows 10 to, okay? So if you go to the Insider plan, uh, if you actually subscribe to the Insider Preview channel and so on, you can actually upgrade your Windows 10 to that same version that I'm using now. As you know, some YouTubers, like some big YouTubers that are not so big, uh, like me, others big, like for example, like uh, Hardware Unboxed, they already tested the Windows 10 versus Windows 11 in games, but the version that they actually tested was the developer version, the leaked version, uh, and we're testing now the insider version. So the insider version is quite different from the, de the developer one. The developer one was more like a Windows 10 with a different skin, while the insider version, the insider preview, is actually different with lots of new things. I mean, not lots, but some new things under the hood. So. That's why I'm testing it, because one of those things is the CPU scheduler, which is supposed to be different, but in this case, in the Windows 11, it is bug. <laughs> and as you can see here, for example, on the EA, the 64 benchmark, you can see that on Windows 10, we have actually um, pretty decent values and normal values per se, as when going to Windows 11, we can see that the L3 cache values are completely and all over the place. So they are way lower than they should ever be in the CPU, the Ryzen 9 5900X. But well, this is an insider version, kind of a beta version. So maybe ADA64 is not just showing the correct numbers and the numbers are actually correct, right? But after making these tests, I actually got to the conclusion that the scheduler is really, really bugged. By the way, thanks John for sending me the, the message saying that about the scheduler. So I decided to do this video for you. And well, without any further delays, let's go to the benchmarks. It's all about humanity. Well, to change things a bit, our first game today is Rainbow Six Siege using Vulkan API and Ultra settings. Here we can see that due to the CPU scheduler bug presented in the Windows 11 Insider, we get a small decrease of 2 average FPS and 5 FPS in the 1% lows. Although, this disadvantage is nullified as soon as we go to 1440p and run into a GPU bottleneck, showing us once again that this is a CPU difference. This time with Far Cry New Dawn, a really CPU dependent title, so we should see Windows 11 being inferior across the board, right? Yeah, but it doesn't happen. 
The only thing that I can think of is that since this game engine uses a low number of cores, the L3 cache doesn't play much here, so we can't actually see the difference. Still very interesting results, as we can see that Windows 11 actually performs better than Windows 10 in this game. Really interesting. Assuming we get this scheduler fixed, we may see some really interesting performance in this engine with Windows 11 in the future. Now with Assassin's Creed Valhalla. As you know, this game is heavily GPU bound unlike the previous Assassin's Creed games, and that shows in the results. Apart from the little drop you see in the 1% lows at 1440p, we have virtually the same results and all within the margin of error. And like I said before, this is because we're GPU bound, and that way we don't get affected much by the CPU scheduler. As for that 1% lows drop at 1440p, it is most likely just a random drop in the benchmark. Let's move on. Now with CSGO and we finally get some really plausible results. Actually, it was with this game that I started to think that something was wrong with Windows 11 and upon testing more games I knew it actually was. And it was actually my friend John that sent me a message saying that the CPU scheduler was bugged and the L3 cache values were all over the place. And he was right, thanks John. As for the results, we can see a difference of over 120 average FPS at 1080p and 1440p between both Windows versions. And if you look at the side-by-side -side comparison, there are parts where the instant FPS numbers have differences bigger than 200 FPS. And that is nothing but big. Of course, we're still getting over 500 average FPS, but still way less than on Windows 10. Now with Horizon Zero Dawn using the X12 and Ultra settings. Once again anything after 1440p and lower than 120 average FPS will get an almost null difference, due to a GPU bottleneck, while at 1080p we have a small difference of 3 average FPS and 5 FPS in the 1% lows. Nothing astonishing, but it is still there, maybe with a bigger difference in other systems. Now we have Red Dead Redemption 2, an absolute masterpiece in several aspects. As for the results, we have once again the same tendency. At 1080p we have some FPS less with Windows 11, mostly on minimums due to the CPU side, which usually controls those results. At 1440p we have also a bit less FPS, but as expected, a smaller difference. And at 4K we're virtually equal. Let's move on. Going to some more competitive games, this time with PUBG. Here we're using the X11 and Ultra settings, and if you asked me before making this test if the difference at 1080p and over 200 average FPS would be so small, I would not believe it. 
even more after seeing the CSGO benchmarks. Still, it is what it is, and we only have a difference of 5 FPS in the 1% lows, even at 1080p, having 1440p and 4K virtually the same results, of course. Very interesting. Now with Fortnite, because Fortnite players also deserve some benchmarks from time to time. Here we're using the replay feature, the X11 and Epic settings. In this game we can actually see a difference in terms of performance and quite bigger than on PUBG. At 1080p we have a difference of 3 average FPS and 8 FPS in the 1% lows by updating to Windows 11 Insider, so less FPS. And even at 1440p we have a small performance decrease. At 4K, we have once again a GPU bottleneck, making results equal. Let's go to the last game. Now, since Warzone fans were always crying about me not testing this game, I bring the tests today. Although like I say in all the comments that I answer, keep in mind that this game has no replay feature so it is extremely difficult to test and the margin of error in these tests will be considerably higher than in other games. As for the results, we can see that averages are more or less the same, with the 1% lows being the difference, being higher at 1080p for Windows 11 and higher at 1440p for Windows 10. But like I said before, these variations are prone to be gameplay sided so the results will most likely be the same in both window versions. Both Windows versions. <laughs> Let's move to the conclusion. So guys, concluding. Well, you actually saw the results and in terms of GPU sided benchmarks, so when we actually get into a GPU bound scenario, we actually get the same results in both systems so in both in, in both the windows 10 sorry and windows 11 and that is and that is because when we get into a gpu bottleneck the cpu scheduler just won't do much because we are gpu bottleneck but once we get out of of the gpu bottleneck and we go to more cpu bottleneck scenarios then is where where we actually see a difference as you can see for example mo and mostly on csgo CSGO is the one that has bigger differences because we have really, really high FPS numbers. We go like 500, 600. So that's why the difference is also big in most scenarios above 120 average FPS. Uh, in most games, you won't really notice the difference unless you are actually, unless you are actually uh, measuring the FPS like I did. Uh, but if you want the most out of your system, I advise you to not use the Windows 11 for gaming, at least for now, because there are lots of fixes incoming, because this is, all, this is just an insider version, like I said previously, a beta version. So, I mean, there are lots of changes to do till the final re release, which will be like in the final of Octo uh, October, sorry, or November, something like that. Um, so, lots of new things will be here. And if they manage to fix the scheduler and bring us a new and better scheduler as they promised, I really think, I really think that uh, the Windows 11 will perform better than the Windows 10. Uh, at least in terms of CPU-sided tasks, okay? Yeah, as for the GPU-sided tasks in the gaming department, I don't really know. Uh, but at least for the CPU side, they may do it in a way that Windows 11 actually performs better. I hope so. Also, as for one before the end note, just let me tell you that this was tested in this particular build. So imagine if you have a different CPU, the results may be different. So if you are CPU bound in most scenarios on your computer, then uh, the difference may be bigger, bigger than, uh, than I actually have now, because your CPU is also lacking uh, comparing to your GPU. And if the scheduler is also worse, then it will be even worse. So the results may be may have a bigger difference uh, depending on the systems or lower one. But basically, if you're playing like single player games, let's say 60, 70, uh, 70 hertz or even 144 hertz in most scenarios, you will be completely fine. But if you want the maximum performance and stability that you can personally have, just stay with Windows 10 for now and wait till the, the final version of the Windows 11 is released. 
Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget, hit like, subscribe and share this video because that really helps a lot. And well, see you in the next one. Possibly the, the video about how to install Windows 10 slash Windows 11. Ciao.